In this video, we're going hunting for comics in downtown Vancouver. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swagglehoss. And in this video, I got a comic book haul to show off to you guys because this weekend I was able to go out and hit up a couple shops in Vancouver and uh, I got some pretty, pretty cool stuff. And I was able to visit a really cool store known as Golden Age Comics and Collectibles in downtown Vancouver. And uh, I was actually able to film in there. So uh, in this video, we're gonna do something a little bit different where I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of my journey digging through the, some of the books. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy that stuff. But before I get into the books that I got and that footage, if you guys could drop me a like or a comment or subscribe if you're enjoying my content. Love interacting with you guys. Help support the channel. Do one of those things and I would really appreciate it. All right. With that being said, here is my visit to Golden Age Comics and Collectibles. That was Golden Age Collectibles. I just made my purchases. Let's get out of this rain and see how I did. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that footage. Uh, it was really fun going to that store. They had a lot of awesome stuff, a lot of really, really cool books. There were some stuff that I decided not to get, although you know maybe I'll go back and, and pick it up at a later date. But I did pick up a bunch of really cool stuff, and uh, I did want to show it off to you guys. So uh, I think you could tell from the footage there was one book that you know I definitely had my eye on, and uh, this is probably by far the coolest one that I was able to get. And that is actually a Strange Tales 111. And for those who don't know, this is actually the first appearance of Baron Mordo and the second appearance of Doctor Strange. And for that reason, the fact that it's the second appearance of one of the most A-tier uh, superheroes of all time, uh, Doctor Strange, or at least, you know, maybe of all time. I don't know. I, I think Doctor Strange is just becoming, you know, one of the big, big characters within the pop culture space. I feel like he's really on the come up overall uh, with, you know, the awareness because of his movies uh, and ben Benedict Cumberbatch's, like, portrayal of him. But being that this is his second appearance, and not only that, this is the first appearance of Baron Mordo, one of his ultimate, you know, rivals. I feel like this book is extremely undervalued. The fact that it is, is is such an early Strange Tales old book and the fact that it has those two notable things and not to mention that, it is the first appearance of Asbestos Man. And we all know how much, you know, everybody loves Asbestos Man as well. No, uh, jokes aside, like the fact that, you know, it has those two factors in it, uh, I think is really awesome and totally undervalued and you can see from the price it was listed at 195 but it, but you know that's canadian dollars so for, the, for those americans out there uh this was actually 150 so i was able to get get this for 150 you know i went you know you know me i went onto ebay i looked at the prices i did my homework and overall 150 to get this book is as low as you're ever going to hope to do uh and for that reason i'm really excited to have this because you know this isn't something that i was necessarily actively hunting but when I come across books like this uh, for deals that I feel are, you know, under FMV, I'm I, I'm always going to pick them up. Generally speaking, I'm, I, I just am because when we get Doctor Strange two, we know that Baron Mordo is going to play a role in Doctor Strange two. When we get that, this is going to be a extremely desirable book, and people are going to be hunting this. I mean, if I were if I wanted to put this onto eBay today, I would instantly make my money back and and some. Um, so. 
for me, it's like whenever I can find books that are under FMV and there's a, a chance for me if, if I want to sell it that day uh, and make my money back, uh, to me, that's always a good purchase. That's how I feel about the books that I, that I pick up. And so for that reason, this is one that I want to get and I'm going to hold for you know the year. And when we get Doctor Strange 2, uh, I believe next year when we get it, uh, I'm going to probably move on with this book and cash in on that equity. And then that's going to be some of the stuff that I use to get you know other books that I want. Or you know maybe uh, after we get Doctor Strange 2, I'm going to be obsessed with Baron Mordo. But regardless, I think that this was a really, really cool pickup and I'm super, super excited to have this in my collection. And uh, when I eventually go home uh this one is definitely definitely going on the wall so strange tales 111 all right some other books that i picked up here um, that are very cool. I came across another copy of Tales to Astonish number 90. Of course, this is the first appearance of Abomination, and I got this for $20. So uh, if you guys are out there hunting this book and you know like what, what some of the prices are at, uh, typically speaking right now, this is a book that's being sold at the $60 mark, maybe $65, $70, depending on the, depending on the grade. Uh, so this is another one that, you know, when I came across it, even though I already have a copy, I figured I should pick up another one. $20. Once we get She-Hulk and Abomination showing up in trailers, uh, I'll definitely move this book on and uh, you know let let uh, someone else have it and, and take some of that equity and move it on into other stuff that I want. Uh, speaking of Doctor Strange, another cool book I had found here, uh, this one I got on spec. This one was just a couple dollars, but this is Doctor Strange 81. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is the first appearance of a character known as Rintra. And Rintra is kind of like, he becomes like this weird, he's this weird creature that is a, you know, assistant to Doctor Strange. And this is one that I got because, uh, I happened to see a Doctor Strange cartoon that had Rintra, Rintra in it. And uh, for me, like, you know, all of a sudden I was immediately a fan of, of this character. But there has been rumors that Rintra might show up in Doctor Strange too. So this is one that I figured, you know, hey, it's a couple a couple dollars if in fact we get that character that's gonna play like, you know, one of Doctor Strange's assistants. If in fact we get that character, uh, this was, you know, one of those books like, you know, we've seen with the numbers of WandaVision and Falcon and Winter Soldier. Uh, this is a book that'll easily go to like that $50 range, you know, for getting a character being represented on the screen. So this one, one I thought was really, really interesting and I figured, hey, I should definitely pick it up. Uh, another book I got here, which was, this was probably <laughs> next to the Doctor Strange book. This is the second coolest book that uh, I found. And that's because there's a little personal story here. Uh, this is Darkhawk number 49. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is the second to last issue of the Darkhawk run. And for those who don't know, I actually have a Doc Darkhawk full run one through 50. And 49 is the last book that I got in order to complete my run. Um, and 49, this came out in 1995, I believe it was. And so issues number 49 and issue number 50 are really, really low print, like really rare. It's actually really hard to find this book and the 50 book. And for that reason, if you look on eBay, uh, generally speaking, this is a book that sells consistently for like $25, $30. You know, people list this for 50. Uh, similarly, his issue number 50, again, another book that sells for 25, 30, 35, etc. So not a cheap book to come by. And uh, you know, I had been actively hunting this book because this was the last one I needed. And I eventually did find a low grade version of this on eBay for like being sold for like 10 bucks or something like that. So I, I did swoop that one up and that's how I completed my run. Uh, but I came across this book, you know, in a bin and being sold at, you know, two dollars $2, US dollars. Uh, and Darkhawk 49, this is a much better copy than the one I have. Uh, but for that reason, I feel like I could even flip this book, you know, because this is, this is a book that sells for $25. So, you know, just again, with, the, with these types of things, if I bought this for a couple dollars here and I could sell it for 25, it pays for a bunch of the other books that I got. Uh, so I don't know, I thought this was cool. I'm a huge Darkhawk fan. Uh, and this, this book will always have a special place in my heart because it is the last book that I found to complete my run. So uh, 49 had to pick it up. Uh, next couple of books here that I got, uh, you know, again, in my previous comic book haul on my way up to Vancouver, I was able to pick up an Eternals number one, which I already showed off to you guys. Uh, well, actually in this store, uh, when I was hunting, I actually came across Eternals number two, Eternals number four, and Eternals number five. Uh, and I actually already have Eternals number three. So uh, because I got all of these books, I now have Eternals one, two, three, four, five. And why am I excited about this? Well. 
I think the Eternals books are so, so underrated as of right now, knowing that we have a movie coming up later this year. Uh, I, I think the values are should be way higher, especially if, if you're going to tell me like, you know, Eternals number one is cheaper than West Coast Avengers White Vision. I mean, you're crazy. So, so for that reason, I feel like there's a lot of growth to be had with these Eternals books. So Eternals number one, we know, is the first appearance of a character known as Icarus. That's going to be played by Richard Madden, who was famously in Game of Thrones. Well, Eternals number two is the first appearance of uh, the character that uh, Salma Hayek is going to be playing, as well as this is the first appearance of the Celestials. So this is a book that I think is also very, very cool as it relates to, you know, uh, what is the growth for this one? Because Eternals number two, I think that the Celestials uh, are going to be like huge bad guys going into this next phase. I think there's probably going to be an event film with the Avengers going against the Celestials. Um, so for that reason, I think that this is going to be a very, very desired book, Eternals number two. And I was actually able to find this for, I guess with the conversion rate, it would have been $25. So $25, Eternals number two, uh, definitely way better than I could do on eBay. So for that reason, uh, I'm very, very happy to get this. And this was like graded around like an 8.5 or a nine. So, you know, still, still high grade, happy to get my hands on it. And then similarly, because I was there uh, and I had Eternals number one and Eternals uh, number three, I have that one at home. Uh, they also had Eternals number four, which uh, Key Collector doesn't have any significance listed to this book. But Eternals number five is actually the first appearance of the character that is going to be played by Angelina Jolie. So for that reason, I wanted to get my hands on this one, which I think conversion wise is probably around 10 bucks. I got this one for, and then this one right here, uh, conversion wise going to be like seven, six, seven dollars. So I figured, hey, why not just have one, two, three, four, five, and then when the movie comes out, you know, depending on the price, uh, I could happily move that, you know, one, two, three, four, five set to someone who really, really wants it and probably make a great return. So uh, very, very, very excited about that. Uh, anyways, that is all I have for this video. Uh, let me know how you guys think I did. Again, I am so, so excited that I got my hands on Strange Tales 111. I think that this book is so cool. Uh, I, I do love the cover. It's too bad that Doctor Strange and Baron Mordo are not on the cover, but uh, I still do love the aesthetic here that, that we do see with Human Torch and Asbestos Man. I mean, I, I make a joke about him, but, but still, I think this is still a really, really cool cover. And I'm very, very excited that I have this book because I think that this is a good sleeper one to have. And I think is going to have a big spike when we get Doctor Strange number two. Anyways, that is all I have for this video. Uh, drop me a like, comment, or subscribe if you enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys um, are doing well out there and I will see you in the next one.